Okay, folks, the last dance. If you're a Michael Jordan fan, if you're a basketball fan, pretty amazing to watch. If you're not a basketball fan, not a Michael Jordan fan, not a Bulls fan, this video is definitely not for you. Uh, I definitely grew up around that era. And uh, my first impression of Michael Jordan as a player wasn't actually his competitiveness. You know, because people always talk about his competitiveness. Uh, personally, I think he was kind of like not that intense on the floor. I, I don't think he was that crazy. I think he was just spot on. I don't think he, if you see him on the court, he's never really like psychotic or like, he was just very focused and you know, very competitive, wanted to win, but I don't think he, I don't think he was acting crazy on the court. He wasn't trying to like, he was just very focused and competitive. Uh, in fact, I think he should have been harder on his teammates. I know that he punched Steve Kerr in the face one time. Uh, maybe that wasn't very nice because Steve Kerr is like, you know, I mean, he's like this tall. Like he even said in documentaries, like I felt about this small after punching Steve Kerr in the face. And you should. Uh, but um, see, the thing is with sports is we don't really have this anymore. Sports are dying. Sports are not going to be around much longer. And if they are, they're a different kind of sport. But sports back in the day was sort of like a, a test of your will. Now it's really a test of your skill. That's the difference between sports then and now. Then it was really a test of your will, and now it's a test of your skill. Modern NBA players are super skilled, but they don't have the same will. You know, they giggle, they cry about fouls, they eat cupcakes. I mean, I don't know, maybe the older players ate cupcakes too, but if they did, they ate it in the locker room. They weren't doing it visibly. Now the uh, players eat cupcakes on court probably, you know? They take a three, take a look at the cupcake. I mean, it's a very cupcake league right now, right? But back then, you know, people say it was a man's league. But it was just the idea that it was very primal. So Jordan was incredibly intense, but I don't think he was like... You know, the thing is, he was very intense, but he played very honorably. Like, he played... He wasn't trying to hurt people on the court. He wasn't trying to plow people over. He just played really hard the right way. You know, kind of like the opposite of the bad boy Pistons, right? Because they played really cheap. And that's why everyone hated them. And that's why it's no surprise that nobody wanted Isaiah Thomas on the dream team. It's not a big shot. People think that it's all because of Michael Jordan. I'm pretty sure many people didn't want him on the team. Um... They assumed that he was going to be a disturbance. He wasn't going to mesh well with the players. So it makes sense. But people put it all on Michael Jordan. Oh, Michael Jordan, like, kicked him out of the dream team. I think Michael Jordan was trying to explain in the documentary, hey, don't look at me. It was, uh, I think he tried saying it in the nicest way possible that, uh, believe me, it was many people on the team that didn't want him on. Uh, but... So you have that early career of Michael Jordan, which was, of course, he's super fast, can jump high, was a one-man show, didn't have many All-Stars to play with. And by many All-Stars, I mean no All-Stars. Um, but the thing that I remember the most about Michael Jordan, like I said, it wasn't his intensity or his competitiveness. It was just... It was... He just looked like a perfect machine designed to play basketball. It was just so artistic and poetic. He didn't have these practice moves. Like he didn't take 18 dribbles and spun around 15 times and did a backwards flip. He was so efficient and he just did. He would move where he needed to move to make a shot and that's it. He didn't do anything extra. He was just so incredibly efficient. It was like a perfect work of art, you know, like no extra strokes that you don't need, no extra colors, no extra glitter, just the couple of steps that he needed and that's it. Um, 
And that really is kind of the uh, one of the major differences between him and Kobe Bryant because they get compared a lot, right? Kobe Bryant was a lot flashier. He took a lot more dribbles. He took a lot of crazy shots. I don't think there's been anybody in the league who takes crazy shots as well as Kobe Bryant. Now, people will say, well, that's not true because his shooting percentage was not that great. He never shot over 50%. Still, the crazy shots he takes, I mean, they're insane. Of course, he's not as efficient, but he, but he, he's incredibly skilled. But, um, see, the one thing that's also crazy is that, like, people compare Michael Jordan to Kobe Bryant a lot. But it's, uh, what's crazy is that, like, Kobe Bryant had the time to practice Michael Jordan's moves before Michael Jordan even came up with the moves, right? Because the first part of Michael Jordan's career, he hadn't really developed that amazing fadeaway that he uses, right? That unstoppable shot. So that killer fadeaway that Michael Jordan's really famous for, he only really mastered it and developed it later on in his career, in the second half. But Kobe Bryant had the time to practice that from the time he was a teenager. He was able to perfect that fadeaway. So he had so many more years of practice ahead of him. So it's kind of, it's kind of a weird way to compare them because it's like, he had his entire life to practice Michael Jordan's moves. So that's why even Michael Jordan jokes about that. If they ever played one-on-one, -on -one, he doesn't think there's anybody who could beat him. But maybe Kobe might have a chance, you know, because he stole all his moves. But it's more than just he stole all his moves. He had time to practice them for more years than Michael Jordan did, which is something that I very rarely hear talked about. Not only did he steal his moves, anyone could steal someone's moves, but he had his entire life to practice them. And Michael Jordan only really got good at those moves in the second part of his career. So it's not, it's a weird, but either way, either way, uh, I guarantee you those would be fun games to play, right? to see those one-on-ones if you could see them. I don't know what their primes are though, right? I don't know, their primes are kind of a little bit debatable, uh, you know? But because uh, some people think Michael Jordan's prime was before the championships, like the, his last couple of years before he won the championships, right? And some people think that Jordan's prime is like the first year that they won the champion or like the first two years. I think by the third year, he was pretty like exhausted and like a little bit tired. But that first, definitely that first year and that second year, he was... But getting off of the Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan debate, uh, and then uh, following, because the, the Kobe Bryant episode was episode five. They did talk about him, so that is part of the documentary. So I'm not making this into like a, you know, a Kobe Bryant versus Michael Jordan thing. Because, but I will say to end it that, Kobe Bryant is the only player I've seen that's as focused as Michael Jordan was. And I think that's what, but Kobe Bryant was the same way. They didn't play, they didn't play, um, they didn't play cheap. They didn't play cheap. They played hard competitiveness, but they weren't. Personally, I think both of them should have been even harder because people, they're, they're accused of going too hard on their teammates. But I think that saying that like sports was a game of will, now it's a game of skill. Well, it was the idea of like willing your way to victory, doing whatever it takes, playing as hard as it can, even if you die on the floor. That's the kind of mentality people used to have. Now it's really not that way at all, which I said, like, that's the essence of sports that will to win. Now it's really just a game of skill. Um, but I think that it's unfortunate because I got to go in a couple of minutes and I'm trying to get a lot of thoughts. So this is probably not the best time to make the video because I have too many thoughts on the subject. Um, okay, so his earlier career, 
Michael Jordan, super fast, can win championships. He had no all-star players with him. Then Scottie Pippen started to develop. And then they won all their championships. Everyone knows about those. His baseball career. Uh, it's weird that two things that Michael Jordan gets a lot of crap for is baseball career and his days with the Wizards. And I think that without any context, it's kind of hard to really talk about him. Uh, he hadn't played baseball since he was a kid. And he went into double A. Double A is no joke. People think that is some sort of like cheap amateur league. Double A is no joke. It's especially to go from somebody who hasn't played baseball since they were a kid and now you just get thrown into double A. Considering everything, he did pretty good. In his Wizards days, the guy was 40 years old scoring over 50 points. And he was injured those two years. Broken ribs, bad knees. His last year, he played all 82 games. That's insane. Highly underrated years. Uh, but, so he gets, you know, Michael Jordan said that people might see him in a different way. He's kind of, uh, he was worried that people might see him in a different way. I don't think that's true. It just depends on... On the person, really, because the way I see it is that when you when you're that focused and that driven and that competitive, and then if you have teammates that are just kind of giggling around, eating cupcakes, it would drive you crazy. You're sitting there ready to die on a court, and then your teammates are giggling and drawing pictures of unicorns, and you're thinking to yourself, "What what is this?" It would drive you crazy. So the so the idea that he only punched one per, one teammate is shocking. I'm surprised he didn't punch every single teammate. Um, and that's the whole point of sport to will yourself to victory, right? That's the whole idea because it's not about just the skill because everyone's skilled, everyone's talented. It's the idea of who has more will to win. Because everyone's skilled, everyone's talented. It's not really about that. At that level, everyone's skilled and talented. And you're going to war with these players. And if they're not ready for war, what are you doing? Right? So that's the whole point of sport. You're going to war with your teammates. Like I said, it's not that way now. Now it's really just about skill. It's not about will. It's a different league, which is why a lot of people stop watching. But I think it's just sports in general and human beings in general we're becoming more docile more tame more loving more nice more watered down more vanilla we don't have that primal instinct like we used to anymore and a lot of sport is based on that primal instinct and we're slowly losing that you know men are becoming hairless smooth dolphin-like yeah that caveman with the hair like that that that's primal we don't that that era of humanity is done with. Um, I got like a minute left. Oh no, I gotta go. Uh, so, maybe I can see a couple of extra minutes, but uh, it's an amazing documentary. Michael Jordan was by far my favorite player. If I were to create a dream team, you know what? The, the documentary is awesome. If you're a basketball fan, watch it. I can go to so many things about it. It's just this video would be like an hour long. But Michael Jordan was always my favorite player. And to me, what makes a great player is not their talent. There's so many talented people. It means nothing. It's the will and the focus and the... There's just certain players that have that thing, and those uh, are always my favorite players. The ones that maintain their focus, the ones that are always consistent, the ones that you could always depend on, that are just always there. And to me, uh, the most dependable 
basketball players that I would love to have on my team if I was making up a team is uh, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, even though, yes, his shooting percentage is not as efficient, but he's got that will, he's got that focus and that drive. So Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, a surprise hit, Manu Ginobili, love his intensity and his will. Uh, Tim Duncan, Hakeem Olajuwon. Those are those are my five favorite players to watch. Those are like I would love to have a team with those. I know that like if you put Kobe Bryant, Manu Ginobili, and Michael Jordan, there, I mean it's, that that doesn't make sense. But like I would have Hakeem Olajuwon. I would have Tim Duncan, and then the other three, it's kind of an odd matchup, but I just really love the way Manu Ginobili played. Uh, even Kobe Bryant, I think he said himself that Manu Ginobili is the closest person he's seen to himself, like that intensity and that drive to win. And to me, those players just don't let you down. Even if they're not having a great game, there's some games where Michael Jordan wasn't having his best game. Uh, game 7 against Indiana, Right? Hardest series that I think the Bulls had during that dynasty. They took him to seven games last few minutes. Uh, he was tired, super tired. Shots weren't going in all the time. But he willed himself to play good defense and get rebounds. And then those are the kind of players that don't let you down. So that's my, those are my five favorite players. Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Manu Ginobili, Tim Duncan, and Hakeem Olajuwon. That's my five players. And uh, that's it. I'll leave it at that. So have a beautiful day, guys. Bye.